And our guest on this very first segment is a man who served 16 years on Capitol Hill. You know who I'm talking about, Mickey Edwards. It's so good to have you here. Thank you, Sam. Quite Thank an you. honor for me to be able to sit and talk with you this yeah, way. Yeah, oh, me too. I you were it. here to get the Constitution Award from Rogers State University. Yes which I think is, is a wonderful, wonderful award and well-deserved. Well, thank you. I, I, I was honored to be selected. Uh, this is my first time to talk with you. To be quite frank, I feel like I know you because of all the times I've heard you on NPR uh, with Terry Gross. Yes. Uh, and so many of the things I've heard you talk about in years past are coming to mind. But let me just right off the top. Is our Constitution in trouble? Our Constitution is in trouble uh, actually for two different reasons, Sam. One, one of them is that it, it's largely ignored. So people in politics today, especially in Congress, but in the states, uh, they know what outcome they want. And so their democracy is about process. And our Constitution is, is to foster deliberation, thoughtfulness, people coming together uh, and working together to solve the problems. And more and more people in government say, this is the outcome I want. I'm going to get it however I want. I won't let the other side offer amendments or, uh, you know, I, I won't have hearings. I'm just going to get this done. Uh, and so that's part of it. Uh, the other part of it is that we do a lot of things now that the Constitution specifically prohibits. Uh, government surveillance uh, or presidents issuing executive orders and doing mm -hmm. things that the Congress is supposed to do. Uh, and so, yeah, I think the constitutional model uh, is disappearing because it, a lot of people think it gets in the way, it slows things down, but it's supposed to slow things down. It's supposed to encourage deliberation and thoughtfulness before you do things that affect the American people. It seems to me, too, that the fourth estate is, is threatened under the way they're doing business on Capitol Hill. Right. Uh, is, is, is the fourth state, meaning print, electronic, the only group threatened, or are there others under threat as well? Well, first of all, the, the, uh, the media is under threat, <coughs> partly, <coughs> excuse me, partly its own fault, uh, because uh, there is a lot of uh, slanting in, in mm -hmm. newspaper articles and so forth. Uh, there was the very infamous uh, case during the election when Lester Moonves, the head of CBS television, said that I don't know whether Trump's good for America or not, but he's certainly good for CBS, meaning, mm -hmm. you know, I, Lester Moonves, is going to make a lot of money this sure, year. Sure. You know, so there are those problems. But no, there are other things. We, we talk about justice, that's part of our constitutional system, is ensuring justice. Well, when you've got people who are unarmed getting shot by the police, or you have prosecutors who are overzealous, you know, th those are problems. When, when you have us, uh, as a government, uh, as we did in Iraq, committing torture, or holding people without charges, complete violations of the Constitution. So, I, no, I think it's not just the fourth estate. I mean, I think a lot of the constitutional values are under threat. I was amazed back when NPR read the Constitution and people, this was out right after the election, were outraged in some instances, taking it to mean they didn't know what they were hearing, but they said NPR was slamming the right. new president. Right. And I'm, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Do they not teach civics anymore? No. Well, the answer to your question is no, they don't. So there have been other studies that have been done over a period of years that show if you ask Americans about the, the items that are in the Bill of Rights, and you don't tell them it's the Bill of Rights, you just tell them the proposal, you know, a lot of them don't, don't like it and, and they think it's uh, unpatriotic or whatever, but it's, it's our system. Uh, I think what's happened is that more and more students under pressure, financial pressure or whatever else are going to colleges, universities that focus more on teaching you to make a, a job, to make a living. And so uh, it's kind of like Votech. Now I, I'm a lawyer and I was taught to be a lawyer in college and I was taught to be a journalist, which I am and you're taught yours. 
But in addition, we used to teach the humanities. We used to teach critical thinking, so you knew how to analyze something you heard and know whether it held up, uh, to know civics, to know how government works, to know, and to study art and music and literature and philosophy and history, the things that make you knowledgeable, thoughtful, able to uh, make wise decisions. That stuff's all getting washed out of the curriculum because of, you know, there's not enough money. And parents are saying, we want you to, we, if we're going to send our kids to college, it's going to cost that much money, we wanted to ensure that they're going to be qualified for a job afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so the things that we used to call a liberal arts education, which are important in a democracy, uh, are getting wiped out of the curriculum and, and, and we're paying for it. You know, it. it troubles me, and I hear this from time to time, uh, when I hear people say, oh, we are a democracy. I'm saying, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute, we're a republic. Let's go back and re Where'd you go to school? Yeah. I, I, do you hear that very much? I do. Uh, I, I put it a little differently. Uh, so it used to be that I would talk to uh, conservatives and they would say, no, 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 we're, we're not a democracy, we're a republic. And, and liberals would insist, no, we're a democracy. Actually, our system is a hybrid and, and that our government, our, the way our struck government is structured is a republic but we are a democracy in the way we elect the people to manage that government, to make the decisions. Mm -hmm. So we're both, and uh, I, I think that we're failing in both areas. I think that because of the uh, party system a lot, you know, a large part of that, the education system, uh, that trust in government is eroding, uh, people aren't voting, uh, or they're not voting thoughtfully. So that's the democracy part. It's getting eroded. Uh, in, in the deliberative process is disappearing from Congress. So uh, you saw the Democrats running Congress, and Republicans used to do it too. We're going to push something through without hearings. We're going to push something through without having debates and allowing you to offer your amendments on the floor. Well, all of this is happening, uh, and... It, so it's not, it's the republic part is being damaged, the democracy part is being damaged. And, and that hybrid system well, was what made us unique, which made us different from every, every other country in the world. And uh, uh, it's disappearing and, and it's dangerous. Are other countries paying attention to what's happening here? Oh my. I know there's been predictions yeah. by other larger nations who've said the United States will eventually implode. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, people around the world today are looking at the United States and saying, can we rely on this country? Uh, can we, uh, does it have mature leadership? Do we, you know, uh, do, does it have a participatory democracy that works? And they're saying, why should we be following the United States? You know, why should we rely on the United States? Why, why should we trust that it's going to do the right thing and that, um, uh, that it's going to work in international uh, negotiations, say, in commerce, you know, that we can all benefit from? Or uh, if there's a military threat, that they will come to the defense of democracies. Uh, I, a lot of people all over the world are beginning to look at the United States in a way that they have not looked at us before. And, Global, and it's this, this very issue. dangerous. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, the issue with global warming, for example, where we, you know, we're pulling out of the Paris Accord, and I'm thinking, whoa, wait a minute here. The, the signs are there without even global warming scientists telling me that. I can see it happening. Uh, why are we doing this? And I can't get a legitimate answer. Right. So part of it is uh, there is this feeling that has grown of distrust for the elites, Distrust for science, distrust for media, distrust, you know, there, there are people now who say so many things don't seem to work that, that whatever, you, if experts tell us this, we don't believe them. We think they're, they're pursuing their own agenda. And, you know, now I, I could look at hurricane after hurricane after hurricane of unprecedented strength. I could look at all the, the changes uh, in the weather patterns and I could say, you don't, you, know, you don't even have to buy the argument that climate change is unusual and that it is done by man-made causes. You can just simply say, if there's 2% chance that, that we are at fault for part of this, 
then you ought to do something about it. You can't, you know, you don't have to buy that it's 100% caused by man. You could say, if it's a little bit, we need to address it and do less. You know, and, and um, I, feel, I, I don't understand the reasoning. I feel like I'm talking to someone who's incredibly and critically important to the survival of the nation. You're a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'd vote for you. Oh, thank By you. By the same token, you voted for Barack Obama in 2008. And it tells me that you seek out position, you seek out intellect, and probably, based on everything I've read about you, not a problem for you to cross the aisle and say, let's work this out together. No, it's not because I consider myself an American. I don't consider myself a Republican or a Democrat. I consider myself an American. Uh, and that, that's part of it. The other part of it is that what I look for in the office of the president, because a lot of the power is in Congress, in the office of the president, I want somebody who is not impulsive, I want somebody whose personality is to be deliberative, thoughtful. Uh, the decisions that you make in the Oval Office can, ha can be cataclysmic. They, they can be extremely harmful or they can be beneficial and you can't have somebody who just does it off the top of their head. Mm -hmm. And what I liked about Barack Obama was that whatever you said, whether you liked his policies, by the way, I, I am a conservative. I, I, a lot of his policies I didn't like. But, but you have somebody in office who is going to slow down, use good judgment, and so forth. I think that's critical. Very quickly, the name of your most recent book. Oh, my, it was called The Parties Versus the People, How to Turn Republicans and Democrats into Americans. Go out and talk to the folks at Barnes & Noble, get a copy. Mickey, thank you so very much. Thanks, sir. We're thank very you very grateful. Much. Now, coming up, we're going to talk to Hannah Berry. She's next, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, how it's going to host I Want Answers when we come back.